But a lot of people will be decorating this weekend because a big part of today's holiday stroll in Old Town is the lighting of the huge Christmas tree, and people are thinking about those trees right now. Oh, yeah. But what you might not know about this Christmas tree is there's a lot that goes into creating it, yeah. and it's all a family affair. Presto, the lights go on. Henry Aceves and his family have been putting up the gigantic Christmas tree in Old Town for the last 20 years. What's interesting? It's not one big tree at all. It's actually over 100 Christmas trees all put together. I would say 90% of the people that come down here don't realize what, how it's constructed. A lot of men will look at it and look at it and they, they, they can see that these are, look like an individual small tree, but they just don't know how it's put together. There's a lot that goes into it, and year after year, Henry sets out with his family and friends searching for the best-looking Douglas fir trees they can find. So we drive up there, we buy them from a certified tree farmer, mm -hmm. and uh, well, one weekend we'll take about three pickups and three trailers, and we go up, and again, it's family and friends, we load them all up and stop in Las Vegas and have breakfast and then come home. He makes it sound so easy. It's, it's, it's hard, but it's a lot of fun. The trip up to the northern part of the state to get all these Douglas firs ready for the big tree is just the first step in the process. They bring them back here to the ranch, they trim them up, then they take them back downtown and get ready to light it up at Old Town. This is a typical tree that we put in the giant tree. Uh -huh. And when we bring them in, they're, the trunks are usually larger than what, what uh, we need. So we get the chainsaws and we trim them down. The trunks have to be trimmed down to around three inches so that they'll fit into the frame of the tree stand that will eventually hold all of them together. Any leftover trimmings will go to making wreaths and garland to hang around Old Town. Once that's done, they'll take the trees to Old Town and use a crane to hoist up the 45-foot tall giant tree stand. It's made out of pipe and it looks like a tree made out of pipe, a rather Charlie Brown looking type of a tree because <laughs> right. it's not decorated. But then. We bring in a crane, we set up the, the stand, and then we start putting the individual trees and from the top all the way down to the bottom. In total, the tree stands 55 feet tall. Add about 13,000 LED lights and over 1,000 ornaments to that, and you have the tallest Christmas tree in New Mexico. It takes two full days just to assemble the tree, but Henry says it's worth it every single year. Well, I, I, I think it feels great. The best part is the fact that we have friends and family that just love to help us, they donate their time. Uh, it's very festive for us and uh, of course when the lights go on just everybody seems to appreciate it so very much and that's why we do it. Oh, I love it. Thanks to you and Terrence for putting that together. That's a great story. It was so much fun to do. You can hear his grandkids. They're so excited. I know. A huge <laughs> family and they're all involved <laughs> and um, of course tonight is a big night. You can see the tree light up nice. to kick off the holiday stroll in Old Town. Yeah, and if you're looking for a good deal on a Christmas tree for your own home, the family has leftover Christmas trees that you can pick up from mm -hmm. their ranch and that's only for about 20 bucks. Isn't yeah, that true? That is true and you can get them from anywhere from six to I think over 12 feet high. I I got my Christmas tree from there for 20, 20 bucks. Wait, where is it located? It's out in the East Mountains, so it's okay. out on their ranch. So, okay. yeah, basically you just head out east, you go like you're going towards uh, T. Harris. Okay. I believe, and then it's out that way. So nice. it's a little bit of a drive. Hey, for is. 20 bucks and those kind of trees that they have, and, and yes, to know you're keeping it in that deal. family, and it's just, it's, it's really fun. special. What a good story. That was really fun. Okay, so now when you're out and about this weekend, you might want to also pick up a toy for a needy child. That's mm -hmm. such a big deal right now. The Marines Toys for Tots program is really in need of new unwrapped toys as well as those cash donations. Right, more than 3,300 local families register for toys, but the Department of Family and Community Service Services estimates that because there are two to four children per family, that there are about 10,000 children who need gifts. Gosh, this year. that's a lot of kids. And listen to this. Last year, 60,000 toys, games, books, and stuffed animals were distributed, but this year only 7,000 items and $12,000 have been collected thus far. So we want to change that. We want to really make sure that everybody gets a toy. Right. Well, we got a little help last night. Last night, Mayor R.J. Berry joined city personnel on a phone bank at APD headquarters to collect cash donations, and if someone called and wanted to donate toys, he sent a member of his staff out there to actually pick them up for them. Yes, and as the mayor told us on the show yesterday when he was here, the last big push will start Monday morning, and that's taking place over at the American Home Furnishings parking lot at Carlisle and Manala. And all you need to do is just drop off those toys. You can also drop off cash, and that is going on all day long. So you right. can go from, you know, even before you get to work or when you're done. Either way, no excuse. Let's make it happen for these yeah, kids. Yeah, we really do. There still is a really big need for it. Now, Definitely. moving on to something different, the 2012 Jingle Throwdown oh. continues, and we're on to the next round. 
Uh, we have the winners of round yes. two. And <laughs> so here we go for one of the brackets. Now we have Slay Ride versus Silent Night. Slay Ride currently winning on that one. Yes. But it's early. It's early. We also have I Saw Mommy Kissing Santa Claus. I knew that one would win. I knew people would love I Saw Mommy Kissing yeah. Santa Claus. And it's Claus. winning so far against Frosty the Snowman. Have you ever seen your mom kiss Santa Claus? No. Me neither. Good thing. This is supposed to be a secret. My dad would be very insulted. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> Rudolph. One? Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer is losing to Silver Bells? Yeah. It made it to the next round, but right now Silver Bells is winning, and I like Silver Bells. So uh, those are three of the rounds. Okay. And we have one more round right we here, this and this is in Santa's Quadrant. White Christmas versus Santa Claus is coming to town. White Christmas is winning right now. I love White Christmas. I love both of those. One of my those. favorites. So. It's going to start getting closer and closer, this so if you fun. feel really strongly about any of, this, any of these songs, go to casa.com and make sure you vote for your favorites. The winners of round three will be announced next Thursday, and then round four starts Friday. And of course, we'll tell you which song wins on Friday. December Can you 21st. believe we're almost there? Like, we're oh. so close. It's amazing. amazing. Now, I want to share some really cool information with our viewers. TripAdvisor has announced its picks for the ski areas where you can really get more bang for your buck. And this is a good one. And we both love this place. Durango came out on top. We're very proud of Durango. And Taos actually came in third. Yep. So, New Mexico making the top five there. Here are the top five ski areas Durango, then Bend, Oregon, then Taos, followed by Salt Lake City, Utah and then North Conway, New Hampshire. That is so cool. And TripAdvisor did a cost comparison, just so you know, of 25 popular ski destinations. And what they did is they combined the average cost of common ski trip expenses, including a one-night stay mm -hmm. at a hotel, a single-day lift ticket, a basic ski rental package, and a meal that would consist of a burger, fries, and also a beer. Right. <laughs> See, you really can find good deals. I, I think. I love skiing around this area. Well, you know best. It's not best. too crowded, and as long as we get the really good snow. But even if we don't, they usually keep the keep the uh, the keep the grounds pretty well groomed. Yeah, so that's it's not nice. too bad. Well, Durango came in at two oh nine sixty five. That was the typical toss with all cost that for that one night, and yeah. that beat Taos only by about thirty bucks. That's pretty good because I heard. Price. I mean, I don't ski, but I've heard those ski lifts and on their own are very expensive. Mm -hmm. And then obviously the, the hotel stay and the food and the beer, everything. They get really pricey when you go up way far north. <laughs> I bet. That's I why bet. I say keep it, keep it local.